Hello students and welcome back for our second lecture on stereoisomerism. So in the first lecture we had uh, we had defined uh, the terms uh, stereoisomer and we showed various examples of stereoisomer particularly those uh, for molecules that are chiral and so now we want to be able to identify the difference between one isomer and another, one uh, ster uh, enantiomer, as they're going to be called, uh, based on a designation around each chiral carbon. And that designation is referred to the kahn ingol prelog system and is stated as either R or S. So if we have two molecules like this, how are we going to differentiate them in terms of naming? Well, yeah, they're both, they would both be uh, two chloro butane. Uh, if we number them like this, one, two, three, four, the carbons, the chloro group is on the second carbon. So we call this two chloro group butane. So the question is, since these are two separate isomers, we need to have a way to designate them uh, and to say which one is which using the name. And we're going to use R or S at the front to do that. So, uh, here is the Kahn Ingold and Prelog system. So, we're going to use atomic numbers to specify priorities among four groups attached to a chiral center. Then, we're going to arrange the molecule in space so that the lowest priority group is facing away from you. And then, we'll count uh, the priorities of the group one, two, three. We'll look to see if they're positioned clockwise relative to one another going around one two three or counterclockwise uh, if it is clockwise we'll use r um, i the way i think of it is uh, clockwise is turning right on the steering wheel and so i think r right right and then the counterclockwise is the s uh, and in in uh in latin sinister meant left uh, it was the used word for left-handed, actually. Uh, you can see how badly left-handed people were treated in the past. So uh, uh, you can, th if you remember that sinister left, uh, counterclockwise is like turning to the left on your steering wheel. And again, handheld models can be very useful to confirm this. We'll have shortcuts too, to make this easier. So uh, let's say that we have this molecule here. There is a chiral carbon. That chiral carbon is right here, where the chlorine is. It's attached to four different groups. It's the only one that's chiral. So uh, to use the Conningle prelog system, we're going to take these and we're going to fill in the hydrogen. Uh, so the hydrogen is on the wedge here, because the chlorine is on the dash. And so filling in the hydrogen, we have this structure down here. And so now the, uh, the chlorine here is on the, the dash, the hydrogen is on the wedge, then we have the other groups here. Now to prioritize these, we go by the atomic number. So the atomic number for hydrogen is one, uh, one, one proton. And so it's going to be last in this grouping. Uh, in, terms, uh, in terms of what will be first, what has the highest atomic number. That would be chlorine. Uh, so if we look at the periodic table real quick, periodic table right here, uh, chlorine is right here. It has atomic number 17. Atomic number 17. And for oxygen it's 8, for carbon it's 6. So if we're looking at these designations here, uh, so in terms of atomic number, it's 17 for chlorine, one for hydrogen, it's uh, eight for oxygen, and it's six for carbon. So that is why the chlorine is given the number one uh, priority, oxygen number two, carbon number three, hydrogen number four. And so now, uh, at that point, we would want to uh, position the lowest number uh, the lowest priority group in the back. It's not positioned in the back here. There are going to be ways that we can do that, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But what if we didn't have to do that? So here's a, a simpler example that we were lo looking at. In this case, 
the hydrogen is on the dash. So the hydrogen is at the uh, lowest priority uh, or the, the, the back position. And what we're going to see is that in the next slide, we'll see that if we have a tie, which we do here, we have a carbon and another carbon, then you go to the next atom. So this is going to be carbon for the first atom here. Then the next atom will be hydrogen. This one will be carbon. And the next biggest atom will be carbon again. And so because car uh, carbon beats out hydrogen, we would number these groups with priority one for the chlorine, uh, two for this carbon, three for this one, and then four for this hydrogen. So now that the hydrogen is in the back on the dash, we now need to look whether one, two, and three is in the clockwise direction or counterclockwise direction. And one, two, three goes in the clockwise direction, like a right hand turn. So it's going like this. And so this designation is R. One, two, three. Right, right hand turn. So uh, this now would be what we are going to call later R, and we put the R in parentheses, uh, to chlorobutane. Like that, and that's what we'll name it. But the designation here is R for the chiral carbon. So as I've said to you guys before, rotating things in your mind like we would have to do in the last example so this is the same example we were using except i said it's not so simple because the hydrogen is in the front position but to use the the uh the rs system here we have to rotate the molecule such that the hydrogen is in the back position away from the viewer and so what you can do is you can simply uh, put the designation. So that's a, a trick that you should use very regularly. So notice we've replaced the atoms now temporarily with the designations. So the chlorine is number one, so we've indicated the one here. The hydrogen is number four, so we've indicated it here. The, uh, the, this carbon is number three, this oxygen is number two. And so what we can do is we can simply, uh, so if let's say this, this white one were the hydrogen and it's sticking out at you like this, and the chlorine is on the, the dash, right? So it's something like this. Well, we can rotate that so that the hydrogen is in the back. And when you do that, essentially what you're doing is you're switching the positions twice. So this is going to be a little shortcut that we're going to use. Notice that a rotation that preserves the stereochemistry involves the switching of positions of two groups. Like here, the one and the four were switched in terms of position, and the two and the three. And so a, a, ver a, a very simple uh, summary of the way it works is that if you switch the position of two groups, you have changed the stereochemistry from R to S, or from S to R, you reversed it. And if you switch again, though, then you've reversed it again. So an even number of switching in groups, switching uh, two groups in positions will be equivalent to a rotation. And so that's the shortcut that you can use. Switching two groups is equivalent to a rotation. See how two groups were switched, one and four and three and two? And so you, you can switch two groups such that you get the lowest priority group to the back. And that's the simplified way of doing this. <clears throat> and that's the way we'll use. So when we did that, Take a look now. When we do that, now the one, two, three of the forwards uh, groups, this is going around in the left, the counterclockwise turning, one, two, three. So this would be an S designation here for this chiral center. <clears throat> so that's what's said here. We count the groups, one, two, three. It's going the counterclockwise direction. That is an S designation for this chiral center. So again, as usual, pause the, pause the video if you want. Okay, now I'm going to show you the answers. So first thing we should do is identify the chiral carbons. So here the chiral carbon is this one, and we already did this one actually, uh, just very briefly again. Uh, the hydrogen was on the dash. Uh, our priorities were, uh, were, one, 
two, three, four. The hydrogen's in the back, and so we have a clockwise one, two, three. This is an R designation. That's the only chiral carbon. Uh, here, the only chiral carbon is the one attached to this, uh, this nitrogen atom here. So here's the chiral carbon. Uh, there is a hydrogen on the wedge. Hydrogen here is on the wedge. And so in terms of giving priority, the, uh, the carbon is going to have the lowest atomic number. Uh, sorry, the hydrogen is going to have the lowest atomic number at one. So it will be the lowest priority. The oxygen has the highest, uh, highest priority at atomic number eight. So it will be the one position the nitrogen has atomic number seven, so it will be at the two position. And the carbon has atomic number six. It will be at the third position, the third priority rather. And then the, the hydrogen is number four. So at this point, what you want to do is again, you want to just simplify this in your mind so you can analyze it. And so we're just going to redraw this uh, with just the positions. And so we're going to put the nitrogen position here on the dash. We're going to call this two. We're going to put the hydrogen position on the wedge. We're going to call this four. We're going to put the oxygen position here on the flat line in the plane of the page. We're going to call that one. And we're going to have another bond out in the plane of the page to the carbon. Uh, we're going to call that, uh, I guess I should have made it a little bit bigger of an angle, but we're going to call this position number three. Okay, and so now what we want to do is we want to do a double switch on these so that uh, our positions are going to be such that the four is on the back. So we can switch any two, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just gonna do what would look like a straight rotation. And so that straight rotation would mean at that point that the four and the two switch. So the four and the two are going to switch positions. And so I'll, I'm going to redraw the, all the dashes and everything. So dash, wedge, flat line, flat line. Okay, so we're going to switch the four and the two here. We're going to switch their positions. And we're also going to switch the one and the three. Because remember, we have to do a double switch to preserve the RS configuration. Otherwise, we, we, uh, we change the enantiomer. So the four is going to be at this position on the dash now. The two is going to be on the wedge. The three is going to be here and the one is going to be here. And so now the four is in the back and we have one, two, three in the clockwise position. One, two, three. So this is going to be an R designation. <clears throat> then here we have an amino acid, amine, and then acid that's been deprotonated the acid has been deprotonated the amine has been protonated but we still have an amino acid this is generally the form that it takes at biological ph it's protonated amine deprotonated acid i want to think about why that is after the uh well we uh, you will talk about it when you get to amino acids specifically in chem 213 but uh it's because uh if you look at the pkas uh the relative pkas here this is acidic in, in blood is nearly neutral at 7.3 so this is more acidic than uh hydronium and this is uh more basic uh here and so this will uh this will get protonated this will be deprotonated uh okay so now let's uh fill in our hydrogen here our hydrogen again is going to be on the wedge so We'll put the hydrogen on the wedge here. Uh, and then this methyl is on the dash, and then we have these two. So again, let's give these priorities here. Uh, now, in terms of this, this carbon, we have two carbons here. It's a tie, and as we're going to see, the tie will be broken by the next atom. And the next atom is oxygen here. So in terms of priorities, uh, the nitrogen will be number one with atomic number seven. Uh, this carbon and this carbon both have atomic number six, 
but the next atom here oxygen has a atomic number eight so this is going to get designation priority two this is going to be three this is going to be four okay and again like last time we'll want to redraw this to kind of clear out the clutter and just include the four groups around the uh the the carbon here and put their designations in their place so four here three here one here oops, four here three here one here and two here and again we're going to do a double switch uh, again it doesn't matter which ones you double switch i like to double switch the wedge and the dash and the two uh, ones in the plane of the page so if we do that if we do that switch then what we get is this new really it's just a rotation of the previous one it's not new it's just like we rotated it uh, but there's a shortcut because rotating it in your mind is is difficult so three four one two three four and again here so the four is in the back and again our situation is one two three in a count in a clockwise rather orientation so this one's all also r they're all r Okay. So, as you saw, we started to get into situations where sometimes, and this will happen quite often, the first atom you get to is a tie. This often happens because you have two carbons. However, overall, these groups are not the same. So we still need to be able to identify a R or S configuration. Uh, so what we do is we list uh, the all the atoms that are attached to that atom so this is a carbon and then we list the atoms that are attached okay this this atom here has a carbon atom attached which is the highest priority at atomic number six this one also has a carbon attached again we don't we only count where we're going we don't count where we're coming from so that's why we're only counting three things uh, we're centered around this carbon right here and so when we look at this one, we're looking at things that are con continue to be connected as we go further down the branch, not where we came from. So these each have one carbon attached, and they also have two hydrogens each. So this is completely tied at this state. Neither of these carbons would have priority over each other upon this analysis. So what we do is we move to the next carbon, and we look at what are these atoms attached to. Well, this has one hydrogen and it has two carbons. So when we're listing our atoms, we'll list the highest priority first, carbon, carbon, this carbon, this carbon. Then the last lowest priority atom attached to this carbon is hydrogen. Again, we don't count where we came from. We only count where we're going further away from the chiral center. Then in this direction, though, the next carbon has one carbon attached and two hydrogens. So because this one has two carbons attached, the second carbon beats the hydrogen. And so this branch, uh, in terms of designation, uh, the hydrogen's four, the oxygen, or the hydrogen's four, the oxygen's two, uh, one rather, uh, one at atomic number eight, four because it has the lowest atomic number one for hydrogen. So we're deciding between these, and the tiebreaker is this second carbon attached here at the, at the second position beats the, the hydrogen attached here. And so we would give this group designation number two and this group designation number three, uh, priority number three. So uh, here's another example of this. Note that we do not add the atomic numbers. We simply look at each atom attached. So for example, if we added at this position here, uh, this has a, hyd a hydroxide group, an OH group, a hydroxyl group, and it has two hydrogens attached. Okay. Uh, so if we were, if we were to uh, look at the next atom, it's oxygen. If we added the atomic number of oxygen 8, hydrogen 1, 1, it would be 10. If we added the, the, uh, the atomic numbers of the three carbons attached, that would add to 12. But this will not get the higher priority compared to this. So again, the oxygen here directly attached to our chiral carbon. The chiral carbon is right here. 
So it has oxygen attached, so that gets designation number one. Hydrogen gets designation number four. So again, we're deciding between designation two and three for these two carbons. So what we do is we look at what's attached. Well, this one has an oxygen attached, and then it has two hydrogens, the oxygen being the highest priority. This carbon atom has three carbons attached, carbon, carbon, carbon. So they're all equal priority. But the oxygen beats the carbon in priority. So this carbon will get designation number two. So right here, this would be designation number two. And this direction would be designation number three. And so even though the atomic numbers here, atomic number for carbon is 666, six, six, even though they add up to 18, and atomic number for oxygen is eight, and for hydrogen it's one, even though these add up to 10, that is not what we're looking at here. What we're looking at is this, the highest priority atom attached versus the highest priority atom attached. And if that doesn't break the tie, you go to the next one to the next one until you get to all three other atoms attached. Again, we don't count, we don't count the ones backwards towards the chiral center, only moving away in the branch. So what if we have a double bond? So here, let's say we're trying to arrange these. We're trying to uh, give these priorities here. <clears throat> uh, if we have a double bond, in terms of priority here, the oxygen is going to count twice. Now, either way, this is going to matter here. It isn't going to matter because uh, what we're going to see is that for each of these as a carbon, so notice it's carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, carbon here. So these are all tied when we get to the first uh, carbon, uh, at least in terms of the first situation. If we list the atoms attached, this one has uh, attached to it hydrogen, 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 three hydrogens. This one has attached to it one carbon, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. This one has attached to it one carbon, this one up here, hydrogen, hydrogen. Again, we don't count the chiral center. We're going away from it. Uh, so this one here would have oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen. So this is going to clearly be the highest priority, this carbon here. So this will be priority number one. This one will clearly be priority number four. To decide these, we have to go to the next atom. This one will have three hydrogens attached, whereas this one will have another carbon. So this would be the last one in this, uh, or rather I should put it, I guess, here. This would be number four, uh, uh, sorry, number three, and this would be number two. This one would have higher part in this one. Uh, here's another example. Again, if you want to try it yourself before you see me do it, please, please go on ahead. We're going to designate RS here. So here, luckily, we've got the fortunate situation where the hydrogen is going to be on the dash. So we're not going to have to do any swapping or switching. We just have to prioritize these. So uh, clearly, the, carbon, the hydrogen is going to be number four. The chlorine with atomic number 17 will be number one. And then we're going to have to decide between these two. And so for this one, because there's a double bond to this carbon, we're going to count the carbons twice. So it's going to be carbon, carbon, and then there's another carbon here. This carbon, besides this one, we don't count this one. This is the chiral center we're looking at right here. Uh, we're counting only further down the branch. So further down the branch here, we have a double bond to carbon here, and then we have a carbon here, so three carbons. But here, this one has a hydrogen attached. So uh, here's the hydrogen. And so in terms of what's attached to this carbon, it's going to be carbon right here, another carbon, down here, and then the lowest priority is a hydrogen. And because the hydrogen beats the carbon, the last one, then uh, this direction is going to have the higher priority. Uh, it will be priority two, and this direction will be priority three. And the four, the lowest priority is already sticking out in the back, and so we have one, two, three in a clockwise fashion. This is going to be an R designation, one, two, three. One, two, three, clockwise. So as I was saying, you know, it can really be really helpful to look at the handheld model and to turn it and to understand why it is that if you double flip groups, 
you will get the same RS configuration. So you can do this to help you assign the priorities. Uh, so if you switch two groups on a chirality center, what you've essentially done is you've rotated it, okay? So uh, what? let's say I have this here. So um, in my plane of my page is the purple and the, and the orange, and then popping out on a wedge is the hydrogen. And popping back away from you is the red one, okay? So let's say this is priority, uh, priority four in the front right here. And this is priority one in the back right here. If I rotate this, okay, notice now that the priority four is in the back and priority one is in the front, right? Or I can do it this way too, because this is more like what it's like on the page. It would be like this. But notice that also the position on the bottom changed as well. So if you want to preserve the RS configuration, you have to do a double swap. You must not only swap the ones on the wedge and the dash, but you also have to swap the other ones. Otherwise, what you've done is you've gone between R and S. So if you do only one swap, you've changed R to S every time you do one swap. So if you want to preserve the, uh, the RS configuration, you need to do a double swap, okay? So for example, here's an example of a double swap. We've, and it doesn't matter if you swap the ones on the wedge and the dash, you could swap any other one as well. So if we swap, swap the three and the four right here, now we've gone from R to S. So if we want to go back to R, we, uh, or, or S, if we want to go back to our original configuration, we have to swap again, to swap the one and the two. And, uh, and so, um, yeah. So again, visualizing this with models is helpful. You could probably pretty easily do this on MoleView as well. Uh, but you, or you can just remember the kind of mnemonic and the simplified method is do a double swap and that's the same as mentally rotating it, okay? So how to designate the R and S configurations. Number one, uh, you got, have to identify that you have a chirality center with four different, uh, four different substituents attached. Otherwise, you don't have R and S. You don't have an antiomers. Uh, assign a priority based on the uh, atomic number. If two atoms have the same atomic number, you go down and look at each atom they're attached to and rank them in terms of atomic number. Not considering the chiral center itself. You don't go backwards. You go further and further down the chain. Uh, and if, that, if those are all tied, you go to the next atom and you do the same thing until you get all the way to the end of the chain. Then you rotate the molecule by doing a double swap, if you like. Uh, that's the, the simplified way, way to do it. Uh, to get the fourth priority group going uh, behind the plane of the page. Then determine whether 1, 2, and 3 follows a clockwise order or a counterclockwise order. And assign the R and S configuration. So for example, uh, he, and then we finally put these in the names to decide uh, to, to actually differentiate these from one another. So again, let's take a look at these. So if we look at this one, um, here the hydrogen is on the dash. So if we uh, uh, assign priorities, it will be priority one for the OH here, priority four for the hydrogen. And then if we use our system, this has three hydrogens attached, this has a carbon. So the carbon here is gonna beat the hydrogen. So this will get designation two, this will get designation three over here and we don't have to rotate this one so you can see that one two three here is in a clockwise rotation so this is going to be r and so that's where we get the designation r and notice we've done a swap here now one and four are swapped in this one so using your you know your heuristic that we just learned since you observed a single swap you would know this would be converting between r and s uh, but you could go through the process and assign r and s so this one is S, we put a hydrogen here, okay? But now we're going to have to uh, rotate this. So we're gonna make our simplified structure here. Okay. And we're actually, uh, I'm gonna erase the, the actual 
atoms since we've already assigned the priority and I'm just going to put the priorities in their place so this uh, the priority here would be four for the hydrogen one for the OH and then uh, I'll erase this as well and then uh, we gave this position priority number three here and this one two and so again we would want to do the double swap here the double swap so we're gonna rotate rotate and we rotate by doing the double swap and so we're gonna swap two and three uh, that was two and three and we're gonna swap the positions of one and four make sure we preserve the configuration we're just rotating it to put the lowest priority group in the back and so now you can see uh, here we have one two three so this is a counterclockwise rotation uh, one two three a left hand turn so this would be s now notice in this structure we have two uh two chiral carbons so this is a chiral carbon here and this one is as well here this one's not chiral because it has three hydrogens attached this one has two hydrogens this one has three so if you have two of the same group again it's not a chiral carbon so again we can assign um, the uh, we can make designations to this um, and the OH here this one's going to be just like this one essentially so it's going to be R so we we can notice here it says 2R and this is because if we're numbering this uh, with locants we would put the locant 1 on the left side because that reaches the first branch with number 2 so that would be as preferable to uh, preferable to numbering it from right to left which would only reach the first branch at the third carbon so the locants should go one two three four five the hydroxyl group is on the second one and it's in the r configuration so we say 2r then we put a comma and we have to indicate whether the next group is r or s and so we'll have to do this whole configuration thing again and notice we have a hydrogen it's on the wedge position okay uh, and so we would give this hydrogen it's the only hydrogen it's going to have designation of four here uh, this carbon is the next least important you can see because if we look at the carbons it's attached to this one has hydrogen 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 let me just list the atoms here so this one has hydrogen 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 attached three hydrogens okay these are all carbons carbon 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 so we have to go to what atoms are attached to them to the side this one has one carbon and two hydrogens attached this carbon here has an oxygen and uh, a carbon this one right here at the end and then one hydrogen so uh, the oxygen wins the most so this direction here is considered two and this carbon beats out the hydrogen so this is considered uh or sorry this is considered one rather not two it's the highest priority the second highest priority is going to be uh, this one with the carbon which beats the hydrogen so this will be position number two and then finally this methyl group will be position number three so what we want to do is redraw this so that we are we are putting uh, just the designations here we want the designations uh, so I'm gonna put the wedge the dash the two flat lines okay so we've got the four on the wedge position the three on the dash position the one here and the two uh, so what we want to do is get the four in the back position so what we can do is we can swap these the four and the three we can swap the one and the two so we're going to do a double swap here so I'll redraw my base structure again and then now 
the three and the four are swapped, so the three will be in this position, the four here, and then the one and the two are swapped. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Right. Oh, I forgot to swap the one and the two. I was wondering what happened. Okay, I didn't swap the one and the two. So uh, let me make sure to swap that. Okay, so uh, we gotta swap the one and the two. I was like, why? Why is it R? It should not be R, right? Uh, so now we have a proper swap. So I swapped the one and the two. I swapped the three and the four. And so now when we look at the one, two, three, one, two, three, it's in. A counterclockwise arrangement that's s uh, and so that's why we say 2r comma 3s so remember the general names of naming alkanes that's really important the numbers never touch the letters so in terms of locants there's always a dash between the numbers and the letters and that includes a dash here in between the r and s designations and the first letter and then so in terms of the the uh the name it's going to be pent one, two, three, four, and notice it doesn't end with ain, it ends with anol. When we get to alcohols, we'll talk about that. The anol means there's an alcohol uh, in this. And so it says two pentanol because the alcohol OH group is on the second carbon. And it says three methyl because on the third carbon there's a methyl group. And then it says two R, three S. Uh, R, R designation around the second carbon, S around the third. And so that's a complete name or a molecule with an antimer. So that's gonna be something you're gonna to have to watch out for. When you start seeing wedges or dashes, you're gonna to have to check and see, hey, wait, is, is this a chiral carbon? If it is, I've got to think about assigning R and S designations. So here's one more. Again, if you wanna pause this one, uh, uh, go ahead and, f and feel free to do so. Uh, so now we're going to designate each chirality center and name this. So pause now. Okay, I'm going to explain to you the answer now. Uh, all right, so uh, if we want to name this, I'm going to go beyond just designating R and S. I'm going to name this. So uh, the longest main chain will be right here. Like that, that would be fine. So for assigning locates, we want to get to the first branch first. Well, if we go this way, one, two, we go this way, one, two. So that doesn't make a decision for us. Uh, if we go this way, one, two, three, four, right uh, one two three four uh, so we've got the situation where we can we can uh, number uh, the same way and the way we number is going to affect uh, the, the R and the S so well we let, let's just designate the R and the S here right uh, so um, all right so here we've got a car chiral carbon atom here and a chiral carbon atom here so in terms of the hydrogen this hydrogen is going to be on the dash and this hydrogen is going to be on the wedge. Okay. And uh, so here, um, notice. All right. So uh, notice here, this hydrogen is already in the back position. That's going to make things a little bit easier for us. Let's start to assign designations. We can probably. Note that you know the hydrogen is going to obviously be designation number four here, uh, and then in terms of the methyl, it's attached to three hydrogens. Uh, so in terms of we got we've got to balance that with these other carbons here as well, or we have to take into account what they're attached to. So if we look at this one, it's attached to hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. This carbon. So again, this carbon ties with this one, ties with this one, so we have to go to what they're attached to. This carbon here is attached to one carbon and two hydrogens. So we would say carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. This carbon here is attached to two carbons and one hydrogen. So this one would be carbon, carbon, hydrogen. And so in this case, the carbon, uh, the, the carbon and, so basically this carbon and this carbon beat this hydrogen. So this one here, this wedged, wedged methyl is gonna be designation number three. And then for going down the line, this carbon here beats this hydrogen. Uh, so this one's gonna be designation number two right here. And then finally, uh, 
this one will be number one, right in this direction. Uh, and so let's let's now draw this on the side. Okay, uh, and so this hydrogen is going to be designated with number four. This methyl is number three. This one's one. This one's two. The hydrogen is already in the back, and so we can just look at the positioning. We have one, two, three. This is a counterclockwise arrangement. One, two, three. Right? Uh, one, two, three. So that's counterclockwise. So we would give this the S designation. Uh, next, we've got this one here. And, uh, but in this case, well, let's go ahead and do the designations. I'm going to erase the old designations so we don't get confused. All right. And uh, we have a similar situation where we know that the hydrogen here is going to be the lowest priority. So that's going to be number four here. Uh, like the last situation, the methyl here will be the next highest priority. And then this carbon is attached to two hydrogens, whereas this carbon is only attached to one. And so this is going to be number two. And then this direction is going to be number one. And so again, we can draw our simplified arrangement here. And we'll have four on the wedge, three on the dash, one, and two. And in this, in this uh, case, we're going to have to do a uh, rotation. So our rotation is going to be, we're going to switch one and two. We're going to switch three and four. And that will rotate the molecule. So this will be two, one. It rotates at 180 degrees. Just, it's basically just taking it like this and turning it around like that. It's 180 degrees. And so, uh, and then this will be two, one, two, and so we switch the one and the two. We're going to switch the three and the four. Now the four is in the back position, and we have one, two, three. This one, two, three is in the, count, the clockwise position, so this is going to be R, uh, R here. Okay. And so that's how we can uh, specify those designations there. At this point, um, I'm going to end. Uh, so this just covered chapter 5.3, the most important part of the chapter, designating R and S. Uh, as we continue, we're going to finish off the chapter, which will include 5.4 to 5.11. Uh, these tend to be a bit simpler. And so the last lecture, uh, that will be the last lecture of this week. So I'll see you there.